nitrocellulose, nitro cotton, gun cotton, it's all just basically flash cotton. Those are the same names for this cool thing that basically turns cotton into a highly flammable substance. Uh, we've made it here on the channel before, but today we're going to use coffee filters to make some flash paper. And then I've got one more trick up my sleeve that's gonna help you learn how to breathe fire. Before we get into that fire breathing trick, we first have to make our flash cotton and flash paper. So to do that, we're gonna use these two guys right here that are highly concentrated acids. We have sulfuric acid and we also have nitric acid. Uh, together, combined, they create this nitrating um, substance that's gonna allow our cotton to basically catch on fire uh, in the blink of an eye. If you guys want a more intense step-by-step -step of this process, make sure you check out this other video that we did here on the channel. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be in the corner somewhere, but it's a really cool video and it's how I learned to do this process as well. We're going to be creating a highly flammable compound called nitrocellulose. This is done by nitrating cellulose through a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. We're going to combine equal parts of the two acids together and they create an exothermic reaction and a toxic gas release. This is very dangerous and shouldn't be done at home because of this toxic gas. We're going to set this under our vent until it cools back down to room temperature. Then we're going to place our cotton or coffee filters in the solution and let them soak for five minutes. What's happening is the cotton fibers are reacting with the nitric acid and nitrate the cotton and there's moisture released and then it's introduced to the reaction. The sulfuric acid on the other hand acts as a dehydrator keeping the moisture from ruining the reaction and keeps the reaction extremely clean. From here we're going to have to thoroughly clean and rinse our cotton and then place it in a water and baking soda mixture. This is to make sure we neutralize the reaction. Then we're going to pat dry and place our cotton in our dehydrator to make sure all the moisture is sucked out. After waiting 24 hours your cotton and flash paper should be ready to go. Previously on the channel, we ran an experiment with flash cotton. Uh, we soaked six cotton balls and we used the same solution. And we found that over time, the burn time went down and the reaction wasn't as strong and beautiful as it was in the beginning with the first cotton ball. So I wanted to run the same experiment with flash paper and see if it was different because, you know, coffee filter is not as thin and I wanted to see if it absorbed as much or less. And based on color of looking at these, I would have to say number one looks very promising. It has that yellow tint to it. It looks like it absorbed more. And then as we go on, the paper starts to feel less saturated and concentrated and more has a worn t-shirt feel. Like this is one of those things where you like rub paper together and it gets softer. So that it's really interesting. So I'm curious to see how well they burn. But before we do that, let's test out this flash cotton and see how it burns. There's nothing there anymore. And that's the really cool thing about flash cotton. That was really powerful. That was way more powerful than I was expecting. Oh my gosh, our poor table. That was awesome, there's like nothing left. And that's the cool thing about flash cotton uh, is that there is nothing left. It burns so much faster than flash paper does. So there might be a little bit more left over from our flash paper than our flash cotton. But let's burn a couple more of these because that was awesome. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's gone. This is really cool because they use this in, as special effects in movies and stuff. The heat it puts off doesn't feel like a lot of heat, which is why it's something that's safe for you to hold in your hand when you're doing flash cotton. You can like throw it and it does the thing because it dissipates and there's nothing really left but some tiny, tiny fibers. I am not brave enough. Brave enough to be launched off a human catapult that we made, but I am not brave enough to hold this flash cotton. So it's gonna continue to sit right here on this little plate. Ah! It never gets old. I love it so much. To show you how powerful our soaked cotton fire balls were, um, this is a normal cotton ball. It just burns. This is what's left over after six cotton balls. This is what's left over after two. The flash cotton worked really well and I feel very confident about these guys going forward. So to make sure we have an even test, um, I'm going to cut out one corner of all of these and we're going to see if the burn time changes at all. I'm gonna cut out 
triangles of each of them and then we're gonna test the burn and then after that we're gonna do some fire breathing. These I feel very comfortable to hold but because we're testing them I'm not going to hold them I'm just gonna leave them sitting and then we are going to time all of them to see if there is a difference in the time period. Here is number one, two, three, go. Three seconds in, well, three seconds, really. Took for the first one. I love these because as it was sitting here, you can see like the leftover shape. You see these fibers that are left behind. They don't burn all the way. And that's the difference between flash cotton and flash paper. The burn time for these guys is much slower um, compared to the fireballs that we just witnessed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in for our burn time. Three point six nine seconds. <laughs> Alright, here goes number two. So remember, what we're testing here is, did these become as nitrated, as saturated with the solution as time went on when we were using the same solution? Previously, in our hypothesis, we had said no, and we proved that to be correct, but I wanted to test that for flash paper. So that's what we're doing here, um, and want to see what happens with number two. I need a timer first. <laughs> Reset. Ready, set. So that one was 3.74 seconds. Go. Much slower burn. Oh, but that one burned a lot more. A lot more of the napkin is like gone, which is interesting. Go. 382. Okay. That one felt like it burned faster to me. I don't know why that is. Also, what I'm noticing is, is our burn time is going up. There's actually less material that's being left, which is pretty interesting. So it's taking longer to burn, but it's using more of the material that's there. That one burned faster. Three minutes and 22 seconds, which is interesting. Guys, I feel like a true firebender, you know, with my hyperhidrosis, I have mastered water bending, and now I'm mastering fire bending. And I guess I've mastered air bending too because I'm a meteorologist. I guess I just have to master earth bending and then I will be an avatar. They're so fun to throw, they just like disappear. Fire! Ooh, faster burn. Okay, so for our last thing where we're going to breathe fire, this is called lycopodium, also known as dragon's breath. Uh, it's used in props departments and in magic to create fireballs and to make things look like they're exploding really big at you. And it's a really unique substance. In medicine, it actually used to be used to coat uh, pills so that they would not stick together. So in the pharmacy, in the pharmaceutical space, that's how they would use it. Lycopodium is really unique. So if I were to take it, if we make a pile of it right here on the workbench, it doesn't light on fire. It is flammable, yes, but it doesn't light easily when it is introduced to a flame. Lycopodium is also very interesting because it is hydrophobic. So if we take it and we put it on top here, it doesn't want to mix. So if I take my finger, and stick it into the water, it comes back out completely dry. If you take lycopodium and you disperse it throughout the air while it's introduced to a flame, you get quite the fireball. So, to make you breathe fire, all you're going to need is some tubing, you're going to need um, some zip ties and a lighter, and that is it. And it's really simple and it's really cool and it, you can surprise all your friends by making a little bit of movie magic with this lycopodium. And remember, we want it to be a powder when it comes out. We don't want it to be this like mass. So it does take a little bit of practice to get it to basically like flutter throughout the air, but I think I've practiced it enough. <sighs> that was a controlled baby fire. We can make it even more aggressive. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw some more lycopodium in here and we're gonna see how big we can make this fireball. <laughs> it's a little dense. It all came out as one little cluster thing and threw a fireball onto the ground back here, which was kind of awesome.
So this is 5 8 this is 3 8 of an inch, um, and I wanna try this bigger one to see if I can get more air through the tube rather than less air. That way it turns into more of a powder. So let's give that a go. Oh baby, that was it! That was so cool! <laughs> you can breathe fire! Three, two, one. Guys, that's it. You have a fire blowing blowtorch now so you can be a dragon or whatever you want to be. Uh, Lycopodium, the coolest substance I think I have found in a long time to use. Uh, today has been fantastic, if you ask me. We played with sulfuric acid and nitric acid and Lycopodium and we made things combust and go boom. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part was and if you would try this at home using the Lycopodium to be a fire breathing dragon. And if you're bored or you're just like wanting to go down a rabbit hole, make sure you check out one of our other videos on here. That is really awesome. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time on the podcast. Make sure you check that out too.